In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for this day that you have blessed us with, Lord. We truly, truly, truly rejoice in this day, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this breath of life that we have in us, Lord. It is your breath that you poured into us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of life for our families, Lord. For every precious brother and sister in Christ who have joined this session, Lord. And all those who will be listening on the YouTube, Lord, later on. Yes, we bless each and every uh, brother and sister in Christ, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Praise We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you. We praise you. We adore you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for your unconditional love for each one of us. Yes, Lord. It is your love, Lord. It is your love that saved us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love, for your mercy that is new every morning, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus for taking our place on the cross, for becoming a substitute on the cross. What was due, the punishment that was due for us, Lord, you took it upon yourself, Lord, so that you redeem us from every curse of the law. And we are now under the blessing of Abraham, Lord, because of what you have done for us, Lord, on the cross. And for this, we, are, we praise you, we thank you, we adore you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are a comforter, a strengthener, a standby, our advocate, our teacher. Yes, Holy Spirit, it is you who is helping us to study the word of God. Yes, it is you who is revealing Jesus to us. Yes, through the scriptures, through the written word of God, Holy Spirit. Without you, we can do absolutely nothing, Holy Spirit. It is you, Holy Spirit, who helps us to receive what God has done for us, what Jesus has done for us on the cross, Holy Spirit. It is you who is helping us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word, for your written word, which is alive and active, Lord. Your word, which is a double-edged sword, Lord. Your word, which is fire, Lord. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord, that helps us to renew our minds. Yes, no matter what we go through, Lord, your word is the solution. Jesus is the solution to everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help. Thank you, Lord. Help us to forget all that has happened in the past, Lord. Help us to start a new life in you, Lord. Yes, you want to give us good things, Lord, and all good things come from you alone, Lord. Yes. Help us to receive all that you have for us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to renew our mind. Here we are today, Lord, to listen. to. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, today to come in your presence, Lord, to know more of you, Lord, through your written word. Speak to us, through Sister Tina, Lord, because you know, Lord, what each one of us wants, what the questions, the, the things that we, are, we, that we go through, Lord. You know everything, Lord. Yes, and give us the solution. Give us the answers to your written word, Lord. Speak to us. Help each one of us, Lord, to understand, to receive your word with understanding, which is so very important, Lord. Help us not just to be the hearers, but also to, the, to be the doers of your word, Lord. Yes, Lord, help us to apply your word in our daily lives, Lord, and receive what you have for us, to receive the results in our life, Lord, to see the manifestation, Lord, of all that we are we are we have, Lord. Yes, the desires, the wants that the desires that we have, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us not to lean on our own understanding, Lord, but help us to rely totally on you, Lord. Totally on you, Lord. Yes, Lord, because you alone have good plans for us, plans to prosper us, Lord, never to harm us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us for all that you are doing for us lord we thank you we praise you yes lord and this word that we receive from you lord yes from uh, from the holy spirit the, the word that we receive lord help us help the that word lord to fall on the good soil of our hearts to be abundant fruit for your kingdom yes holy spirit help us in this and we make this prayer to christ our lord amen praise god amen Hello. Say Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we take authority and we bind all powers and forces of evil in the air, in the ground, in the water, in the underground, in the underworld, in nature and in fire. You are the Lord over the entire universe and we give you glory for your creation. In the name of Jesus, we bind all demonic forces that have come against us and our families. And we seal all of us in the protection of your precious blood that was shed for us on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for surrounding us with your mantle of love and protecting us from the snares of the enemy. Amen. 
Amén. We thank you for this pregnancy. We thank you because you have taken sickness out of our midst. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 15. And so we will not have any of the negative symptoms of pregnancy. We will not have morning sickness, swollen feet, diabetes, hypertension, or free at left Almighty, we thank you for this pregnancy. We thank you because we have taken sickness out of our midst. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. And so we will not have any of the negative symptoms of pregnancy. We will not have morning sickness, swollen feet, diabetes, hypertension, or fever. Your word declares that we shall not suffer this death, and the number of our days you will fulfill. Exodus chapter 23, verses 25 to 23. This pregnancy will be fulfilled in two weeks. We are tired of and a word says, you will rebuke the devourer for our sin, and he shall not destroy the fruits of our womb. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. Your word declares that we shall not suffer miscarriage, and the number of our days you will fulfill. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 to 26. This pregnancy will be fruitful in Jesus' name. We are titled. And your word says you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of our body. Thank you because children are your heritage and And we are so grateful to have received your reward of the fruit of the Psalm 127, verse 3. We praise you because our children will be like arrows in the head, and we will be happy with our favor full of children. Psalm 127, verse 4. Great is the peace of our children, Lord, for they shall be taught of you. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 13. Thank you because children are your heritage. And we are so grateful to have received your reward for the food for the Psalm 127 verse. We praise you because our children will be like arrows in our and we will be happy with our key work to our children. Psalm 127 verse. Great is the peace of our children, Lord, that they shall be taught of you. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2. Lord, we bless you because we know your God, God's life, and our kingdom, and not of evil, to give us an expected thing. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And we declare that the expected end will be the safe community of a perfect and healthy kingdom. Every good and perfect gift is from the God and comes from the Father of the Lord. To whom there is no relation or shadow of the James chapter 1, verse 17. Therefore, we are assured that our babies are good and perfect and good. Lord, we bless you because we know your thoughts towards us are peace, not of evil, to give us an expected end. Jeremiah chapter 21, verse 17. And we declare that the expected end will be the safe delivery of the perfect and perfection. Every good and perfect gift is from our comes from the Father of Light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of good. James chapter 1 verse 6. Therefore, we are sure that the babies are good and perfect and Jesus is saved. We will not be afraid of anything concerning this pregnancy. And the safe delivery of our family. We rebuke fear and doubt. But the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. We cast down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. 
we bring into captivity every thought with obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We let the peace of God in our spirit in our hearts. And we refuse to worry about anything. Colossians chapter 3, verse 6. We'll not be afraid of anything concerning this pregnancy in the safe delivery of our babies. We will fear and doubt that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, love, power, and spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. We cast down imaginations and imagine high things that absorb the sad things in the world of God. We bring into captivity and we brought the deliverance of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. We let the peace of God move in our heart and we refuse to worry about that. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. We shall not labor in vain or have trouble bringing food, for our offspring are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 24. Your joy will be our strength in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10. For you are the strength of God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 10. We shall not love labor in vain or have trouble bringing food, for our offspring are the seed of the blessed of the Lord. Your joy will be a strength one. Nehemiah chapter mm -hmm. 8 verse 2. For you are the strength of the life. Philippians chapter 4 verse 2. Father, pain is under the curse of the world. And the word says that we just wrote our pain. So we will give all pain and the prayer. We have a short, easy, pain free day. In Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 7. We will not tolerate any pain or complication during our presence. Father, pain is under the curse of the Lord. And your word says that Jesus grew up. So we rebuke all pain and declare that we will have a short, easy, pain meeting. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 7. We will not tolerate any Tolerate any pain or complications to be not by the same and deliver. Amen. 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 Prayer for pregnancy. Heavenly Father, I thank you, I praise you. Lord Jesus, Galatians 3.13 says that you have redeemed us from every curse of the law. Whatever the curse is, it has been destroyed and nailed on the cross. Lord, you have redeemed each one of us. We thank you so much, O oh Lord, that as we lay our hands on our womb, we speak life into this womb. We rebuke the spirit of death that is causing miscarriage and abortion in the name of Jesus. Lord, your life is flowing into this womb bringing recovery and restoration of the baby in the womb. In the name of Jesus, as we listen and understand your word day and night, we are changing every negative report that was good going against the conception of our baby. We, I thank you, Lord, that a great transformation has taken place in our life in the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit. The curse of barrenness, the curse of miscarriage is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Our baby is conceived with no symptoms or complications of any sort and is going through full term. Our baby is delivered healthy, normal, pain-free in the might, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Good day. Everyone, once again, welcome back to the Mamas and Papa session. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone would like to give glory to God for the blessings that He has bestowed upon you?
I would like to praise and thank God for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us, especially for me to come today for the session, even though Satan had an evil report and said that you are unwell and sick. But my God changed that evil report to a good report and said that by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, I am healed. And even I was a bit worried, oh, I'm not prepared for the session today. But when you lean on the understanding and the knowledge of God, nothing is impossible because the Holy Spirit is leading the session, not me, but the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us today is leading the session. And the Holy Spirit has prepared this banquet for us mm -hmm. to increase our faith and not lean on our own understanding, but lean on the truth and the promise of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, we'll Here's start, sister. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Praise no, God. Yeah, praise God. Because, you know, to get this time, like, you know, suddenly, like, you know, so many odd things come to me. And uh, praise God. My system was not starting. The speaker was not working. I could not hear anything. Praise God. But, you know, after going with starting everything, I could, you know, everything is perfect in Jesus' name. Amen. So this Amen. these are the yes, these are the things, you know, small small things, but you know uh, the distraction and the hindrance comes on the way when we want to come and listen to the word of God. Praise God. Thank you. So, but I want to to make some way anywhere that when there is a perfect way to make the path safe for us. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And it this is just a one-hour session, but how many of us are fed for the week with this session? And how many are going to hear it on YouTube with this session? So definitely, when we give our availability to God, God brings Great. multi fruits out of it. So praise God. Let's. I'll start, sister. Yes. 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 Okay. So I think a few weeks ago, I was talking about the vital things for the fruit of the womb. Isn't it? I started that topic, but then I went somewhere else and then we did other things. So I just want to go back on it and complete that. So the first point which I was talking about is lay demand on the goodness and mercy of God in prayer that means we need to stand on the goodness and mercy of God in prayer that is in Mark 11 chapter 11 verse 24 which says therefore I say unto you You're putting it, sister. Thank you. Mark cha chapter 11, verse 24. Yeah. Uh, which, which verse, sister? 24? Yeah, verse 24, yes. sister. Okay. And which translation? The translation, which one is in the... Oh, we can put so, King James okay. Version. Okay. Anything is fine. Therefore, Death. I say, yeah. therefore, I say unto you, what things so, so ever, a desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. 
praise god so when we put a demand on lay our demands on the goodness and favor of god in prayer that is in line with verse 11 mark 11 24 so you see what whatsoever things so you desire so god says whatever you desire whether you desire for just one child two children triplets quadruplets whatever you you desire for three children four children whatever you desire you need to pray and believe that you have received them and you shall have them yes you need to pray with the promise of god and believe it already that you have received it so today we are going to see a lot about how this word believe plays an important part and how our action should be in regards to the promise of god so the first point as i said lay demands on the goodness and mercy of god in prayer so when you pray so we need to pray for our desire to be fulfilled whatever may be it the lord is ready to answer it when you believe what is believe action yeah your yeah. action corresponds so you yeah action for so i'm already claiming that i am a fruitful mother of children i'm a fruitful father of many children so that's what is believe so prayer is the proof of your desire praise god then we'll move on to prayer is necessary and a necessity okay prayer is a necessity and necessary and a necessity so you need to pray about what you are desiring for and you need to stand upon the promise of god so how do i stand on the promise of god by the scriptures which we have confessed just before we started why are we confessing these scriptures because we want to walk in faith and not in sight when we come to this place this platform of mama and papas do we say we hopefully we will receive one day something hopefully we will receive it hopefully no we do not hope we believe we have received it and we go in confidence so remember in uh, uh when Hannah was praying when Hannah was praying what happened when she was praying for a child as she was praying what happened Eli the priest, priest. he interrupted her and said are you drunk then she said no i am not drunk but i am praying for a child i am praying honestly and he said before she could even complete a prayer he said you are blessed and let all that you prayed for be answered so that is prayer where even before we complete our sentences god is ready to give it to us when we believe what we are praying for 
And when she got that confirmation from Ellie, did she be disappointed? No. No. I think we'll take that uh, chapter again. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 14, if we can take that and just look at few. We have already gone through all of them, isn't it? And through all the six women who was had delayed in their pregnancies but still received it. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, 14, sister. 14, verse 14. Verse 14. Only verse 14. Chapter 1, uh, verse... chapter 1, sister. Okay, yeah, from there we can read from 14. Oh, I'll read it, sister. Okay. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken with her toe. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. So imagine she is praying, Mm -hmm. And Ellie has already given her the confirmation by the time she could complete her prayers that go in peace, go in peace, and you have already whatever you have asked, your petition is has been granted unto you. And she said, Let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went away and did eat and a countenance was no more sad. So she was with a heavy heart. If you'll remember, if you'll go further in front, uh, the beginning of the chapter, she came with a heavy heart. And every year she used to come to this temple feast. But a prayer wasn't answered. But this time... The moment she heard Ellie saying that this prophetic word, she held on to that promise and believed, my God has answered me. And with that confidence, she started eating because she didn't want, want to eat or do anything. And she was so sad, even though she was coming to God to pray and worship God but she did not come with a spirit of joy but a spirit of sorrow with a heavy heart and the Lord took a sorrow away and turned it into joy so prayer is very very important and it should be in line with the promise of God, always our prayer should be in line with our promise of God. So let us look at Psalms 113 verse 9. One, one, three, sister. Anyone can raise. He make the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise you, the Lord. Amen. Can we do AMPC, sister, if you don't mind? Thank you, sister. AMPC. Can you just do, uh, like, what is called that?
comparison no uh, yes yes i can thank you sister oh, perfect sister He makes the barren woman to be a homemaker and a joyful mother of spiritual children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is the promise God has given each and every one who are standing in emptiness. Still, like Hannah even though she came every year, every month, maybe there are many who are visiting churches, who are praying, but with a heavy heart. But today, the Lord is saying, go with a joyful heart because he makes the barren woman to be a homemaker. Who's a homemaker? A woman who is taking care of her family, is dedicating you to the family. And a joyful mother, not of ordinary children, but spiritual children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Write down this verse. Let this be the confession in your mouth. Write it down in your heart and confess it every day. And you will reap the fruits out of it. And look at it. It says, and a joyful mother of a spiritual child. Does it say like that? No, spiritual children. Please. Children. So you are not desiring just one, but many. God has given this promise. Amen. So how can I say that this promise is fulfilled? Let us look at Hebrews 11 verse 11. Translation, sister. Put the board. I like this. It's fine, sister. Anyone can read. Because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age for it, because. She considered God, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. Amen. Thank you, brother. Praise God. So, Sarah stood in faith. Because of faith, Sarah herself received physical powers. Remember? Sarah need to, needed to have that physical reversal in her body because she was in menopause. She was at an age where there cannot be any children growing, coming forth. And God blessed her because she was standing on his promise, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. So do you stand on that same promise to affirm that my God has blessed me with what I have desired because I'm leaning on his goodness and his favor. If I'm standing on the goodness and favor of God, I do not speak about what is wrong in my body. To take, for instance, I just came across a person who said that I delivered my baby at 25 weeks. And the reason why is because I have, she has that problem of 
cervical dystocia where they say that the cervix opens up before its time. Cervix should only open when it's time for the delivery. And even though they stitched the cervix, it happened. And this mother already had that in a previous pregnancy and she had it in the second pregnancy as well. And she was talking to me about a child and saying how delayed a child is in all developments because baby was born early and lots of complications and everything. And now the baby is going to be nearly four years, I think. Yeah, four years old. And baby is still not able to speak or anything. Nothing. Just able to say some syllables or something. And I can see she's so heavy in her heart does not know which direction to turn. Then I was giving a, a example, as you all would have heard many a times, of how a friend of mine was having the same problem, but she delivered a baby only after 40 weeks. She did not hold on to the promise. I explained to her the promise because she was not in the word and neither is a believer of any faith. But by giving her the word, that word is live and active. And that word saved her through it. So when I was explaining to this mother, I said, you believe the moment you receive the next child, your son would be perfect and is back in all that you desired for your son, the way you want you him to speak, everything will come into place. Do not fear for another child. So how important it is for us to hold on to the promise and stand in faith. So imagine y'all who are here, who are listening on YouTube. When y'all are standing on the promise, God does not give you anything just ordinary and do not think your prayer is not answered. It has been answered. There may be a delay, but you are definitely having a handful of children. Praise God. So the next point is take Steps of faith in the direction of childbearing. Take steps of faith in the directions of childbearing. So let us look at James chapter 2 verses 17 to 20. So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power, inoperative dead. But someone will say to you then, you say you have faith, and I have good works. Now you show me your alleged faith apart from any good works if you can and I by good works of obedience will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. So do the demons believe and shudder in terror and horror such as make a man's hair stand on end and contract the surface of his skin. Are you willing to be shown proof, you foolish, unproductive, spiritually deficient fellow, 
that fate apart from good works is inactive and ineffective and worthless. Amen. Thank you, brother. So take steps of faith in the directions of childbearing. So if you look at the first verse, so also if it does not have works. So even so, I'm reading the King James Version. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. So if you say, I believe my God and I know my God is able to do it the same way as you see in verse 19 that even the evil one the devil also believes but he does not serve God. And if, even so faith if it has not works is dead being alone. So very important whether in your action of faith are you just by yourself fighting this battle to receive your anointed children or are you along with your spouse? It's very important for you to be in union with your spouse. Why do you think it is important? that we can fight this battle just by ourselves, all alone. Why do you think in this, in this journey, of weight of receiving anointed children can you just one of the couple just pray and receive the blessing just one person is enough or both should be in union and needs to desire for the blessing both the sister has to be both. in union, in agreement, praise God. Yeah, in agreement, you got the perfect word, sister. You need to be in agreement. For it says, if you go to verse 17, so also faith, if it does not have works, by itself is destitute of power. That is, it is destitute of being alone. That means you cannot have faith just by one spouse desiring for the child. And you cannot do things alone because when you have come together in holy matrimony, in an agreement, you are both become one flesh become one flesh with the Holy Spirit. So no more you have one desire and your spouse has another desire. To take for example, leave this topic. Any of y'all have ever prayed together as a couple and have not received things? Okay, to make the question simpler, any of y'all have prayed together as a couple and have received things? Yes. Sister. Did you see uh, answers to your prayer? Yes. yes sister. Can, you give, can you give any example, sister? Oh, praise God. Um... Okay, uh, the recent uh, example is that uh, 
he was praying for something for to get uh, to get it for that and uh, it was a difficult system but you know when we pray together because we had a one intention for both you know when we pray and uh, praise god and he got granted this thing and we received it so so this was like in the power like when we both agreed and prayed for it amen if god answered that prayer and agreement is there any prayer which is not too hard for him mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. so you need to start making agreement prayers for the anointed children as well that's what god wants because when you make an agreement together definitely it has been answered can we take that verse the agreement prayer verse do you all remember it i know the verse but i don't know from where it comes matthew 18 uh, 18 18 18 19 yeah, 20 yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll put it in <laughs> 19 right or 18 to 19 18 19 <laughs> there yeah. we we'll put it you see so many of us in many areas of our life if you feel why my prayer is not answered because the person who needs to agree is your spouse make that prayer with your spouse or oh, and you will see definitely answers and changes to your situation amen We can read the verse eighteen. Yeah, we can read from King James, sister. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Yes. I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything. that they shall ask and it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven how many of you agree to gather place your hands on the womb and believe that this is the day or this is the time my god has anointed us with fruitful children to come out of this womb and we agree together and one thing in this agreement it can only be made between the husband and wife isn't it it cannot be made with anyone else this prayer it can be used agreement for any purpose but when it comes for your child it should be between your husband and the wife and definitely if you have agreed together and confessed together you are seeing the fruit of the womb every day agree together and believe that the lord has opened that womb up for anointed children to overflow praise god praise god so faith with no corresponding action is dead we can go back to james chapter 2 17 to 20 so faith with no action is dead but without no o vain man that faith without works is dead 
So unless you all have agreed together, believing that your God has already done it for you, you will not receive it. So how can I have this faith into action? Refuse strife and fight in your house. How many of us are in arguments and in strife and get more irritable because we cannot see children in our house? I can hear news from my sister-in-law, brother-in-law, my friends, my closest neighbor, this person, that person, and the strife is building up more that I'm going to just explore at some point of time. Does it happen? Or has it happened? Yes. There are many situations where Satan waits for that opportunity to stir it up. And then maybe in-laws are talking, other people are talking about you. And strife is building up. When strife and fights are building up, you will not see the fruit of your womb because faith is dead. Faith without works is dead. So refuse to fight whatsoever it may be. It may be the worst situation. Refuse to fight and let there be peace in your house. So remember, when two of you agree together, definitely you have received your blessing. You have received your blessing in agreement. Because... When you agree together and stand in holy matrimony together, the Lord has cancelled your individual signatures and made it one signature. So both of you all need to consent to receive it. If you all are both all the time arguing and fighting and in strife, will you receive your blessing? I want to go to this doctor. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Because you're not praying, that is what you're not receiving the blessing. How many of times we point out, we be judgmental in regards to our spouse. Yes, you are not coming to church. That's why. Yes, you are not doing this. That's why. This, 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 this. All that fight and strife is the one which is short-circuiting your blessing. To take, for example, many of y'all have joint accounts. With one person's signature, can you withdraw money from your account? Unless it's with the... Uh, if it's both, you know, or either. If it is either, then one. Uh, no, if it is both, then both has to sign. Both has to sign, yeah. The same way, this is your spiritual account which you have already got the blessings of to be a fruitful mother from where? From Psalms 113, it's already said that you are a fruitful mother of many children. How will you receive this account being open unless you both agree together and sign that and say we are ready to receive this blessing and not fight and argue. The moment you're bringing fight and argument and strife into your bedroom, you will not see the blessings because many of us will want to pick at that time all the arguments, all that was happened that day and just get into strife and then say, I don't know why I'm not receiving my blessing because this is what is happening. Fights, arguments, maybe it's just a little thing. 
Satan wants to stir it up because he does not want you to receive your blessing. What are children to you? They are joy. They are peace. They are happiness. So all that has been put aside because you want to hold up your fight or your strife or your argument and want to see that you are in the right path. Ignore it. The moment you ignore, you will see your blessings flowing. So you are the joint heirs of the grace of fruitfulness. And when you are fighting and in strife, then you are Working in contrary to your faith. You're in anti-faith. So for example, when you touch an electric wire where electricity is passing, will you be, will you receive that electricity? Yes. You'll get a shock. Yeah. You will yes. get a shock. But if you wear rubber gloves, okay, and you touch it, will you still get the shock? No. No. no, because the gloves acts as an insulator. So some of you, your faith is insulated by fighting. So your faith does not pass through because of your fighting, your arguments, your strife. So why is it not touching both your bodies? Why that faith is not working in your bodies and why your reproductive organs are not giving forth the fruitfulness is because there is an insulation and that is fighting arguments and strife. So the Bible says, your prayers will not be answered. It cannot be answered if you are in strife. So your faith will not work. There is no action there. So the day you decide, when you have decided to get married, what happened? God cancels as I told you earlier God cancels both your signatures and make it one signature so that one signature should come from both of you all together to receive the blessings of fruitfulness so the husband cannot just put the signature, neither only the wife. You all need to come in agreement for it. Like to take, for example, when you go to or when anyone you would have heard of going to a fertility treatment or anything, will they say just either of the couple come and you will be, we can uh, start the process and you can have uh, conceive and have a child? No. They want both. both. If the earthly people are looking of having both of you there, how much more your yes. heavenly father wants you all both to be there in agreement? Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So if you say, oh yeah, I'm going for fertility treatment, but my, but my wife doesn't want to come. My husband doesn't want to come. Can the doctor do anything? Not at all. Nothing, no. nothing, nothing no. at all. Even if the wife goes and the doctor gives her, he needs both your results to know what is the problem. The same way the Lord needs both of y'all completely agreeing together for this child. Not in strife, not in arguments, 
but willingly ready to receive the fruitfulness of your womb. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And why does sickness arise? Why all that arises? Because of all the strife and arguments. And that brings forth all that sickness upon the reproductive system. Because you are not in one accord. <laughs> That's why there is a delay and longer you want to be in strife, you will only see delay. Praise God. Thank you. If I go back, you know, when like the when we were sharing, if I go back, um, my when I was praying, you know, to come to come over here to be with my husband, we were I was praying, praying, and so many people prayed with me, and you know, there was a time. Uh, this woman of God, this messenger, he said, he said to me, unless he agrees, you know, to bring you over here, the prayers, the what you are um, praying for will not be answered. So pray for him to have that faith and you know to get that confidence and to put that you know desire in his heart so that you know the prayers are answered. So then even this Matthew uh, uh, eighteen. That agreement, you know, that prayer was told to me. I remember that because I forgot about it. Now, when we were sharing, I just was reminded. And it is very true. Unless he agreed, you know, he had got that desire in his heart, the prayer will not answer his Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Praise so God. you made. You made agreement prayers, you made prayers, prayed with many people, but yes. the most important person you needed to be with had to agree. So Even that's I the same. prayed with, along with him, but you know, I could sense it, you know, that, that a man was not coming from the heart. <laughs> I, I could make out it, sister, because yeah, it, it is my, my experience, I could make out it. But uh, praise God. So there was one point that came one point and this, you know, brought up. Unless he agrees, uh, you know, that desire that you have that, it is not going to be so you pray for him, you know, to have that desire. And praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I remembered very well now. So every prayer, that's what one pastor, one person who was praying mm -hmm. said. From the time I got married, even if my wife was sick, if she couldn't even speak, I always went to her, stood together with her and made an agreement. And I told her, you just nod your head and say yes. And I've received my blessing, whether it's in finances, whether it's in uh, whatever area of my life, I've seen that agreement prayer being prosperous i've never ever been never a door has been shut and when i was hearing that i recollected it to myself when my husband and myself we prayed for many things in our life to come to new zealand to think it may have taken a little delay but definitely it was answered. And we always agreed in anything we did. Even before we could get married, we were saving money and we wanted to get married. Everything what we wanted came to pass. But that time I did know the agreement, but we always prayed and did things and we received it. I tell you, we received it. So the greatest person, the greatest person that you can receive your blessing God has blessed you with 
is your spouse. You do not need to look for anyone else. So if you are not in agreement with your spouse, how can you receive that supernatural blessing? So that is what today is, to be in agreement with your spouse. Not one, not only the wife can go to different churches, pray, 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 no. Neither the, only the husband can be keep praying, 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 no. It has to be done together. So works of faith is not the same all the time. For example, if you're believing God, for a car, you cannot pray the same prayer as you're praying for a confession of an anointed child. It changes. The same way if you're praying for finances, the prayer confessions change. So it keeps changing. So we need to believe in agreement with our spouse. That's what God has given them to us. And a miracle is coming today. In the name of Jesus, we are all going to take that opportunity to agree with our spouse and not to be in strife and in argument. Whatever may be it, it is the worst what your spouse has done, do not get into argument and lose your spiritual person. Keep it aside. Leave it aside. The Lord will take care of it and handle it. So works of faith. So there are different steps in the works of faith. The first one is protect Protect your agreement. You agree together and got married to your spouse. It wasn't by mistake. So you need to protect your agreement at home and give up your strife. Every time your spouse you see, you're always ready to argue. You're ready to Disrespect your spouse, no. Protect your agreement. Meet with your spouse regularly, sexually. As 1 Samuel 1 verse 17 says, if you look at 1 Samuel 1 verse 17, One Samuel. One was. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can, uh, uh, can you just put that chapter, sister? Okay. I was saying the translation. No, no, no. Uh, no uh, after 17, can you put it? Yeah, the verse after. I think 20. Mm. I think I've lost the worst. All right. Anyway, praise God. So if you look even at all of them who are waiting for a pregnancy, unless they add sexual intercourse, they receive their child. So it's very important to spend time with your spouse.
Like yeah, you is, look. There, there is one verse, sister, but I'm not sure. After the instruction was given, maybe this is a different translation within the version of the Ah, okay. Ah, yeah, yeah. One minute. 19, 19, 19, 19, 19 yeah. yeah. Elkana knew his wife. Uh, yeah, we'll yeah. change the translation, sister, as yeah. you said. Hey, yeah, uh, oh, okay, okay, anything. Please God. Is it uh, this verse? Verse 19? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Rama. And Elkanah knew Hanan, his wife, and the Lord remembered. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hana conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Amen. So when it says, And Elkanah knew Anna, yes, they had an intimate relationship. So it does not end, I just pray, pray, but you need to be having that intimate relationship with your spouse. Meeting with your spouse as many times as possible. Even when you see in with Abraham, yes, unless they had that intimate relationship, they received their child. They did not say, yes, it's over. It, yes, God has blessed. But you know, when Abraham received his blessing, 24 years, he was waiting. But the moment God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham and said, you are the father of many nations within a year's time, he his wife conceived a child. The moment he started believing it. And definitely he was in intimate relationship with his wife, Sarah, to receive that child. The next step is name your child. I've said this many a times earlier. Put your first, second or third name for your child. Sit down and come to a place and call your child. Start visualizing your child is around. Tell your child, go pick this up for me. Go leave this there. I'm going to play with this. Fill your house with toys for your child. Start buying clothes for your children. Yes. You will see the glory of the Lord. Your faith confessions. The next step is your faith confession. What is confession of faith? So confession is not confessing, saying, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for all that I've done. I'm sorry. No, confession of faith is, confession means, the word confession means homologue. Om means, comes from the word homosexual. That is same. And logio means word, the same word. That is speaking back God's word to him. 
speaking is promises. Take the confessions of pregnancies, write them down and speak it upon your children that you want to receive. Start making a diary for your children. And you and your spouse, speak your confessions before you come in intimate relationship with each other. You will definitely see the glory of the Lord. So say the same word biblically. So the profession of your faith is saying what God has said it about your life. When I get up every day, I thank the Lord for the day because I'm carrying my anointed children in my womb because today is the day that the Lord has blessed me. So how many of us speak to the children in our home? Praise God. There was a point of time when I was thinking my daughter always, from when she was like very little too, maybe when she could understand, I used to tell her that, yeah, mom's got babies in her womb. And every day she will kiss my tummy. And then at one point of time, as she was growing, she asked, where are the children? Then I said, the children are growing in. And then I was started telling her and she started keeping names. Every time I come back from work or before I go, she'll talk to them, she'll speak to them. And then I started to a point, I told her, you believe your brother or, and, or sister is along with you playing. And she started playing like that. She started visualizing. When we go to the park, she'll put the children in the swing. She'll tell me to help them to go into the swing. So that is what God wants us to believe, that our children are with her. And from that time, she started enjoying playing. She never felt alone. And we believe what the Lord has given to this little child is definitely coming to pass. Amen. Praise God. So I used to feel a bit upset because when we used to take her around to play with other children, either they are not her age or they are still don't want to play or something. It never used to click. Very, very Just maybe one or two children really could play with her or she could play with them. And then the Lord gave me this wisdom and said, you start telling her that she's already got a siblings around with her. And she's playing and dancing. And even when I go and drop her in school, she'll say, wait one minute, I'm kissing. Uh, she calls them dumplings. I'm kissing my dumplings, mm -hmm. she'll say. And then she'll run to school. And she will do it in a way that no one will notice. And she'll go to school. So that's what God wants us to be. Like children, visualize. Visualize your children around you. And definitely you have seen the harvest. Praise God. We got the wonderful truths today. And I believe in faith we are receiving our blessing. Amen. This year is the year of glory to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Anyone wants to add anything? Or oh, anyone wants to say anything that you have learned from today?
place God has uh, such a, it's a reminder for the you know to have that agreement in husband and wife. Uh, praise God. See how the Holy Spirit is working just before we could go to sleep, you know, this night, uh, last night. And uh, there was something like, you know, I always don't explain to my husband, you know, something like, you know, he's going odd and I don't tell him. I keep it in me and I pray. So yesterday it just popped up to my mouth. And uh, so he came to me and he said, why didn't you tell me? We both are one, he said, and we both should pray together. I, I just took it casually from him. I said, uh, it's okay, I said, and I left it. Now, as you were explaining, sister, see, these things I had forgotten about it. Small, small things, sister. But, you know, that agreement is very important between the husband and wife, and both should agree, and it has a more power. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you know, for teaching us and reminding us, you know, the things which we have forgotten about it. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, sister. And what a mighty person we have beside us and we always look for other people to pray with. Isn't it? Yes. All they need to do is just say yes. I do agree. The faith will work. Your faith will mix with their faith and definitely it will work. Oh, what if my, my spouse is not a believer? You need to teach them how to believe by your actions and definitely you will see the corresponding action. Teach them out of love, not in attitude or in a way of superiority. Teach them out of love. Amen. Amen. Do you have anything to say, Sister Fatima? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sister. Uh, speaking about her, na, like, you know, we know, uh, like, uh, I have read about her, I have known her, but today it gave me a new this, you know, like as you were sharing that Hana came before the Lord with a sorrowful spirit. And she went back with spirit of joy. Praise God. We pray, sister. But uh, we don't go back with that joy, you know. It's always like, again, we, we like as time passes by, <laughs> we, we see that things are not working out. And then we go back into that same sort of praise God. But now as you have, uh, like, you know, through the power of the Holy Spirit, you've shared that we have to have that joy, knowing that the prayer is already answered. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And we have to, uh, that action is very important. That action is that uh, we have to have that spirit of joy. We have to be joyful at all times, which we, like, you know, when we see that things don't work out and then we get back into that old self, like, you know, praise God. But now it's so very important to have this action of that be joyful, Believe, knowing that that God has already answered and same like how Hannah in due in due time she conceived you know it, it, it didn't say like immediately like you know as the time like you know uh, she saw that manifestation in the physical so praise God we have to trust and believe and keep on believing do, do not to give up you know in that waiting period not to give up like you know get back get back renew our mind and you know just stay encouraged in the lord have that confidence that knowing that god has done it it's done and as we know that god is like uh, his love for everyone is the same praise god he is not he is not partial to anyone and whoever believes whoever believes receives in the name of jesus so yes praise god i take back this sister praise god also the agreement very very important because you know one person speaks one thing and the other person speaks another thing it becomes a disagreement praise god and uh, what we speak is very important whether we are speaking in the positive which is aligning with the word of god or, or are we agreeing to uh, things like which uh, uh, you know uh, from the uh, from the kingdom of the evil one you know sometimes we speak wrong things and when one person speaks the wrong thing other person like your spouse also if if that person speaks the same thing then that also may come to pass because we are uh, like you know we are agreeing on things which are not according to the will of god so it's very important that we speak we come to an agreement only only what god says about us like 
you know speak only the promises of god don't speak anything beyond uh, what god has promised you know so that's also very very important so i take back so much sister from today's teaching praise god and it's the it's the holy spirit who is teaching us praise god amen praise yes. god like just two hours before it i was like not feeling up to it and i said we'll cancel but i've never ever done that maybe yes. yesterday i cancelled i've no i can't go to work but this is god's ordained time and this is not only for four of us who are here but it also goes further to the ends of the world mm -hmm. those who are listening on youtube as well so god made it said i am choosing you you speak what i give to you praise god praise amen, amen. Pinky, you want to share anything? Uh, yes, Tina. The session was so good, Tina. And I would like to share that I uh, that I received blessings. My daughter was sick. Actually, she had a two take, and the two take uh, she had a pain in her mouth fully. We just prayed. The stripes and wounds of Jesus, she's completely healed. So the two take was okay. But the next day she had mums. So we do know whether it's a mums or it's a two, two take swelling or what. So we admitted her in the hospital. And when we went up to the hospital, we prayed to God. And you won't believe the next day there was no swelling and there was no pain. But if you admit the hospital, they will not send immediately. They have to keep an observer. So she's yet in the hospital. And I asked her the next day, is it paining? She said, no, no pain at all, mommy. How it was paining yesterday? Today, there's no pain at all. So when we pray, when we connect ourselves towards God, when we pray with the promise of God, we are blessed. Yes, Tina, we have to connect ourselves to the word of God. Amen. What Please. situation we have? Only we have to connect ourselves. Not only me, the person who's affected also should have that belief and have the connection with God. Then only we'll be blessed. Amen. Absolutely. God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. I still was not able to join the session. It was going and coming, coming out. No signal, no current last night, nothing. But I said, no. I should join the section today. Somewhere I went to the next house. I charged my phone at least 10 percentage. So till now, just two percentage has gone down to mm -hmm. us. Yes. So yes. God yes. knows we, we, if we are there in that situation, we have to be with God. Means God can do miracles. Yes. If you stay Amen. in the promise of God. Yes. So actually, if we, we, we go to a Zoom meeting, it will just go down fully. You know, the charge goes yes. on within at least 50 percentage. But my charge, it went on only two percentage. <laughs> Thank Only you. two percentage. I have eight percentage in my phone. So, yes, God. So everything is God's plan, not our plan. We lean on the God. We are blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone would like to do the Thanksgiving prayer? Oh, I can do it. I'll do it, you know. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Pinky. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you, Lord, for this day. We thank and praise you, Lord, for blessing each family who are gathered here, Lord. Bless them with our children, Lord. Yes, Lord, if, if two or more are gathered, Lord, we are blessed, Lord, in your word, Lord. If we lean on your understanding and your promises, Lord, we are blessed with multi-children, Lord. Yes, Master. Every every week, Saturday, we pray, Lord, we pray that some corner of the world, somebody's blessed, Lord, with a child, Lord. We not only pray for ourselves, but we pray for the whole world, those who are waiting for, for the anointed children, Lord. Yes, Master. We thank and pray those who have children, Lord, and those who are blessed with the anointed children, Lord. Yes, Master. We thank you, Lord. Children are a gift, Lord, for us. In whatever situation we are, if our children are next to us, we are blessed, Master. We are blessed. Yes, Master, we thank and praise you. And I pray for 
Sister Fatima, Sister Reshma, that they are blessed with a good family, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. I thank and praise for Fatima's family, Lord Jesus. Every, every week she spends a day by showing us that God is there in every situation, that she's blessed with the word of God and she shares the word of God, Lord Jesus. Yes, Master. We thank and praise you, Lord, for this day that we are here, Lord Jesus. That if we lean on your word, Lord, we are blessed, Master. All this we ask in your most precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pinky.